Well, hey guys. Hello, hello. It's Friday. Ask me anything. It's your journey with Jenny. And guess what? I, Scott, have tricked everyone. It's really not about anything about me. It's all about my special guest. And today, my special guest is Scott Toombs, one of my hey most hello, hello. favorite. Friday. Ask me anything. Is that me? And guess what? I, Scott, have tricked everyone. Hold on. It's really not about anything about me. It's Hold on. Do you guys hear that? Today. Yes, we can. Scott what do I do? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a mess. Even our, our <laughs> team meetings during the week, it's not posting right. It, it's a mess. Okay. Well, I'm recording. So no matter what happens, we got that going on for us. So this will be awesome. So back to Scott. This is all about Scott. Scott Toombs, you have been my bold coach two times here in the Tulsa area, and I got to shadow you, and you are honestly one of my most favorite of all time coaches. You make me laugh. You probably heard me cackle out loud, loud many times, you know, whenever you crack those jokes and nobody quite gets them yet, so I think I'm really smart because I got them, and, and I'm supporting you because I think it's important for you to keep up the jokes because whenever we are laughing, we are learning, and we are growing and we're getting inspired and pumped up. So Scott, this is all about you. You've been through quite a journey just over this last year of your whole world being turned upside down with all this. You used to travel a lot. Now you don't. Now you got a new uh, role really inside of Bold. And so let's just talk about you. Tell everyone who you are, what you do, and why you're just so darn awesome. <laughs> Thank you, number one. That was a very kind words. Um, really, truly, thanks. Um, so yeah, let me just sum up, um, uh, I guess, my, my journey in real estate over the last 16 years, uh, because I think it all goes into play to, to where I am now, um, and really and truly the opportunity that we have uh, in this company, and, and honestly, in this entire industry. Um, so 16 years ago, I, I left pharmaceutical sales and moved halfway across the country to get into real estate. Um, you know, I've watched HDTV and then I thought every commission would be $30,000 and super excited to go take on the world as a, as a young 33 year old uh, married with, with, with a nine month old uh, son. And me and my wife moved halfway across the country, moved to South Texas and joined a local um, uh, boutique real estate company. And after nine months in real estate, uh, I paid a lot of commission into my broker and I said, you know, maybe I should own my own company. And, and I had no idea what Keller Williams was. I knew what franchises were and I knew that route and I came across Keller Williams. And so I called international and I called him and I called him and I called him and I called him. Um, and I finally got, a, I got a call back from a, a, a young lady named Wendy Harrelson and Wendy <laughs> was a team leader in San Antonio at the time. And we met, got together, and she said, you know what? We think you can do this. You're the right behavior. And they gave me, a, they set me down, Mark Willis and her, and they said, you know, do this. And I said, okay, I can go do that. And, you know, that was, I was 34 years old and had nine months of real estate experience. And what, I, what, what was opened up to me was way more than I could ever imagine. And it's been 16 years later and we still have that company. And from that one, I got to launch a second one. I became a regional director in the Ohio Valley for four years and got to work with the McKissicks, which was overwhelmingly an amazing, amazing time. Became a bold coach in 2014 and got to work with Diana and John and my world grew even more. Um, and then in 2000, it, it, last year, I became the director of bold coaches uh, with Keller Williams International. And again, my world just continues to grow. I get to work with some of the best people in the, I mean, in the world doing what they do and having a passion around that. So in a way, I pinch myself because this, you know, probably shouldn't have been the way that it worked out. Like there was no indicator early in my life that somebody would say, you're going to have success at anything. So I was very, I just feel very blessed to be honest with you. That's just real quickly my story. Well, I love that story because it's the story that we all have, whether we've discovered it yet or not. And it's the power of a bold mindset, which is what you have helped so many of us uh, grow in. And I'm certain I know so many of the faces uh, here with us in Zoom land and, and we've all had those breakthroughs during that bold room in that classroom when we uh, got to dream bigger than we ever thought possible. So you see others' ch lives change 
uh, dramatically and yours has as well. So what is it about being a, a bold coach and being in the classroom with students that just set your soul on fire? Cause you're, you're great at it. Well, I, I'll tell you this, and, and I don't know if it's the answer that people are going to expect. Um, I know that I've been asked this question a lot and <laughs> You know, I, I think people go, well, you get to help people change their lives. And, and I believe that we provide an environment and yet people change their lives. You know, I would not, not me by any stretch of the imagination. I look at bold and doing what I do very selfishly. I get to live in a bold world every single day. See, some people take bold one time and they, 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 they're in it for seven weeks and they feel good and they're enthusiastic and they challenge themselves and they're tired. That is my life on a daily basis. And so selfishly, I believe I'm the one who learns the most every single time that I step into a room on a Zoom. And, and that's what's important to me. That a life by design is a choice. And this is, this is my choice. Like I choose to do this. And I'm very, like, I get it. I'm glad people are there. <laughs> I am. And I'm glad that they, they get something very positive for them in production and mindset. Um, that's just the environment. I mean, that's what you're choosing to do in there. And I'm choosing to do the same thing. I, I learned a long time ago, and I think it was um, Mark Willis who taught me this, that if you truly want to master something, at some point, you've got to be the person that's teaching it, that's living it. And um, I've always taken that to heart. And, and, and that, so that's why I do bold, period. When I stop growing, then I'm done, I think, you know. Well, uh, Joel has asked a question here in the chat, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it because I think it's so important for all of us. How do you put that mindset into people in your world that aren't necessarily in our Keller Williams world, right? Like you see this happen a lot whenever a student's in the classroom and, and they have friends and family around them that aren't used to our language or our big thinking and it gets uncomfortable. So how do you do that? Well, it's interesting. Um, like the, the, our actions in my mind speak way louder than we ever could. So we can go out and say things and we can do affirmations. You can chant around your yard if you want to, and your neighbors are going to think you are weird. Um, I, I get all of that. And yet how we, like literally it's how we choose. It's the way that we look at the world um, and that we're being, you know, when you go back to bold, to me, people ask, how can you describe bold? It's be, do, achieve. That's how I, that's the simplest three words to me that describes the entire bold process who you're becoming, what you're doing, and then you're going to change it the next day so you can become, do, become, and do. Um, I, I think that's, it, it's, it's, it's almost infectious. Have you ever been around somebody that's passionate? I always tell this story, um, and Scott Pinella, if you know him, um, he, he's a phenomenal real estate agent out of uh, Louisville, um, and, and, and phenomenal wife, just a great family. Uh, but he, he has a, 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 a little goat farm called Give a Goat in, in Africa, and he has a lot of passion for it. Now, I don't know about you, I don't have a goat. I've never owned a goat. I don't know where goats are. Andrew, I know you have goats, but I don't, like goats aren't on my radar. Like I don't, you know, there's, I've never thought about a goat. And I got on a plane and, and you spend time with Scott and he is so passionate about it that you, you know, you walk away from him. You have a give a goat hat and you're giving money to him, you know? And, and I think it's, that's infectious. It, it, my son is 16 years old and it, this came to play the other day. He's been looking for a job. Not, not hard. Okay, let me, let me straighten it out. He has not been looking real hard, um, but he has. And he put an application in. He called me yesterday. He was fishing and he called me and he said, hey, I've got my first interview. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you. He goes, yeah. He goes, dad, you're going to love it. And I said, well, he goes, they asked me this question. They said, hey, will you send me a re your resume? And I told him, I don't have a resume, but I've got a positive attitude. And they said, we love that answer. We'll interview you on Tuesday because <laughs> he's never had a job, you know? Um, so I, I think that's how it works out around. It's by who we're being. Like, you got to, that's, that's an authenticity. Like, you can't fake it, you know? You're either going to have, you're going to go to those moments. And to me, that's how everything spreads. So I hope I answered your question, Joel. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll just kind of something you said in there that, that stuck out to me was, you know, when you have passion around what you're doing, that's the, when the enthusiasm comes and the, the motivation and the drive. Well, so many of us struggle to figure out that big why or what our personal mission is in life, because that when we do, that pulls us 
and into where we're supposed to be and to, into that joy and happiness. So talk to those who are still struggling to figure that out because it's common. A lot of us. Yeah, well, it, it is common. And, and I'm one of those, like, I, I, how many of you have ever judged your why compared to somebody else's? Yeah, I do all the time. Like you hear people's whys are like, you know, we I want to give water to everybody. And, you know, we're going to give socks to, you know, I'm like, holy cow, I didn't even think about socks. You know, like, but here's what I've discovered though. And, and I, your why is yours. It's not wrong. It's yours. So if your why is as simple as, you know, I, I want to take my family on a vacation every single year. I, you know, I want to pay for my kids college. Um, it doesn't, you, there, there is no comparison. Because once we start, stop comparing our whys to others, then we'll be grasped by it. And you might have to set small ones. You know, like um, I always tell the, the, the story, like there's very few things I'm not willing to do so that my wife has a life that she is absolutely fanatically excited to be a part of. You know, it, it's that simple. So whatever it may be, like if it's, and it's not, she doesn't, you know, she's, it's not asking for, you know, a home in every state, but I want to be the person that when she, when she has a desire that I'm, that's a why for me. Like I want, I, I want that for her. Like that drives me. It does. That'll make me pick up the phone. That'll make me get up early. That'll get me on a flight. That'll have me drive through the night. Whatever it takes, because that's something that I get something from. It, it's my why. She's a part of that why. Now, it's not giving water to everybody, and maybe I should start thinking like that. Um, but you got to find what's pulling you. I mean, really and truly, because you're right. It, it's, the, it's, it's putting propulsion into where you want to go. Once you understand why you're doing it, it literally is like attaching an engine. It's the difference between having a rowboat and a motorboat. And I promise you, you cannot row faster than a motorboat can. Oh, gosh, that's a great answer. Um, so your our sweet friend, um, Andrew Pepper, has asked this question. He says, Scott, I know you're very passionate about helping people become their very best. However, you're still only one person and only have... The, the amount of time that you have. So how do you choose who you're going to serve, help, and prioritize that? Well, I, I, <laughs> I read this book one time and, um, and I, I probably should remember it. Now, I want to say I heard it from Darren Hardy. So maybe it's one of his books. Um, so I'm not going to quote me on this one. But I read this thing and it said that the average person has four people that cry at their funeral. Four. Four people will cry at your funeral. And do you know what the number one indicator is of how many people actually show up at your funeral? The weather. If it rains, 50% of the people that plan to go to your funeral won't even go. And that really was pretty profound to me because I started looking at where I was putting my time, my anxieties, my energy, my focus. And I asked myself the question, is it on those four that are going to cry at my funeral? Because right now, I only know of three that I think will cry my wife and two kids. So I'm hunting for that fourth one. You know, I'm like, I gotta find a fourth one. Um, the reality of it is though, it, is it, it made me start thinking like, okay, who do I, who, who am I pointing into? And so that's where I start. And, and, and that's easy to say, you know, my wife tells me all the time, don't bold me. I, I get that. You know, my kids, you know, go, oh my God, dad's going to get, you know, give us a bold speech. And yet, I'm okay with that because that means they're hearing it. They've heard it enough, you know? Um, and then from there, Andrew, I, I think it's everybody. Like, you know, I've talked to you. Uh, I, I, it, it's amazing to me how few people reach out. You know, one of the coolest things that I've ever had in my life are, are people. I mean, I can go back and the, one of the biggest wealth indicators in my life, one of the people that have brought me the most wealth in my life is Wendy Harrelson. She sponsored me into Keller Williams. She's a partner with me in my market centers. She's been a mentor to me. She's been a part of my family's life for the last 16 years. Meeting her has changed my family and impacted a lot of people just because I met her and she poured into me. So that, that's what it is, Andrew. I think it's anybody that asks, honestly. I think that is a really good thing to note. And that's what's so cool about our company is that 
you know, we have lots and lots of friends. I mean, lots and lots of friends. And, and really, whenever we do get to get together in person, isn't it amazing how you always run into that same little crew? Because it's the people that show up are always at the top of the list. And if that's not by a uh, mistake, like that is because it's the the 20%. 20% of the 20%. What's that extreme Pareto? Let's go mm -hmm. all the way, the extreme there. So what do you have to say about that? Is it, uh, does it have anything to do with who you hang out with? Yeah, well, there's no doubt about that. And, and, and I'll tell you, let me give you a story. I, I think this is just fascinating. I've been in real estate since 2005, I think. Um, and I, I've, been a, I, I've been a bold coach. I, I love this company. And I've taught thousands, I've taught bold over a hundred times. So, you know, I've put in thousands of hours in doing this. I get a postcard from one real estate agent con consistently for the last five years. One out of the thousands and thousands of agents that I know. Now, do you have any idea who that one agent is? It's Jenny. We get one post. Well, I, I, the reason why I'm saying this is because to me, this is it. I mean, this is it. Like, th th this is what we're talking about. I saw this post the other, other day and I reached out to her, um, to Jenny. Somebody asked in, in bold for a, 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 a referral in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I think there were something like 37 responses at the time. 36 of them were for, for Jenny, for one person. So you got to understand success. You're right. They're the people who show up. I mean, and it's, and it's, and it's just that. Melanie Kinnaman, do y'all know Melanie? She's an OP in Austin now. She came into Keller Williams the same time I did. And, and she did something. I, and I remember this and, I've, and I have so much respect for her. If you ever go to a Keller Williams event, go to the first row and find who's sitting there. And she didn't do it because she, of who she is now. She is because who she is now, because she did it then. There was no doubt who she was going to be. No doubt. Wow. And that is so fascinating and so true. I'm the biggest nerd. I don't know about y'all. Are you guys the ones that like to sit at the front? I do. I mean, because then I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to be all in because learning and growing is who we are. Like it's in us and we got to give it all when we're there. Yeah. That's super important. And thank you for the shout out. And it's because over time, Scott, it's, it's systems and it's um, being purposeful and having a database and knowing how to apply the touches to my database. So yeah. thank you for being a part of my database and uh, sharing that. So what else do we need to talk about? You're, you're doing the virtual bolts these days, which is an awesome new way of doing this. So how, how are students um, connecting and growing and, and how do you feel like the results are, are working so far? Personally, I think there it's very, very phenomenal. And when you look back at what happened last year in March, you know we 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 did bold in the first um, first round of 2020. Then the pandemic hit, and we had to pivot, and we did. And uh, bold pivot was born, and it was um, the product that was needed at the moment. Okay, now was it bold? Well, it was a version of bold. But what is bold? Well, we got to remember bold was written to be a transformational class. I mean, tra when I say transformational, I mean, what is that? What, what would you think of? Well, to transform something, there's two things that have to change. Our habitual thinking and our habitual actions. If we can change any of those, and I mean tiny changes, what happens when you make those changes is that you literally transform your life. That's why we have the bold law that says, you know, change your thinking, change your world. It's absolutely the truth. Okay. So what we did after 2020 is we, at the end of the year, we had to look and say, where is our gap? Okay. We have this live stream where people are sitting down watching us with no accountability, no engagement. So are we really able to transform lives in this setting? And the answer was no. Now it was it was it was for the moment it was had what had to be done and I'm not that that was exactly right, but how do we come back and get back in a bold room where we have teams where we have accountability and track numbers where we have emotions and breakdown and tears where people get to share and engage? So we came up with what's called bold local. 
And, you know, we work with Keller Williams University. We, we went through 12 years of bold material. I'm talking about from 2009, from the original bold to where we are now. And we pulled the best stuff. Because you got to remember, things on mindset, I mean, you know, foundational are foundations. People ask me all the time, like, man, you know, what's the secret way to get more listings? And there's no secret way. <laughs> I wish there was. I mean, we have a diet industry that's just absolutely billions of dollars off of that misconception alone. You know, 21 days, don't eat anything. And then when you do, you're going to go right back to where you are. So it, it, we, we rewrote this to create the closest to the in-room experience possible without being in the room. So we brought back the teams. We bought back fouls. We brought back tracking our numbers. We brought all those things back in. It's one coach for six weeks and there's a graduation. So some people aren't gonna graduate because they chose not to do the work. And what this is allowing us to do is get it back to being transformational. It's helping create different thinking habits, which is gonna lead to different actions, which will eventually lead to different results. That's the difference. So I, um, we know that your favorite bold law is be, do, achieve, or at least that's the, the definition of what you believe that bold classroom is all about. What are some of your other favorite bold laws and why? That's a great one. I, I love fear of faith. Um, I was reading this uh, uh, article on, on fear. And if you go back and, and I mean, look at yourself as a, as a child, and, and we were all kids at one time, every one of you were a kid. <laughs> I know you, we think sometimes we forget that um, we don't really have fear because we haven't learned it yet. Uh, but as we get programmed through life, fear becomes something that that keeps us away from what we truly desire. Because I don't, I don't believe anybody got into real estate to be broke or average. Like nobody goes, oh, my God, I got a license. I hope I don't sell anything. <laughs> you know, oh, my gosh, I hope I do no business. And I. And what keeps us from it is that fear. And as soon as we understand that, that if we just have faith, I mean, if we have faith, it's going to work out. If we have faith that, we, that, we, that the model works. I mean, every day you, you, like you get in a car and you drive and you have faith that everybody else is going to stay on their side of the road. You do it unconsciously. And yet when it comes to things that we're not unconsciously doing, then fear becomes our biggest pain point that we've got to work through. So on a daily basis, I probably say fear of faith at least one time, because there's a moment where I've got to choose. Am I going to let fear stand here? Or am I going to have faith? It's going to work out. So uh, there's a word in bold that we don't say, and that's hope. So when you were saying faith, it made me feel like you've got to have hope in something and yet still hope isn't the right word. So what's the difference between the two? Well, to, to me, faith is, is that you absolutely know it's going to work out. You're not hoping it's going to work out. You, you, it's going to work out. And it might not be the way that you think it is. Um, it, you know, probably, you probably don't want to know this. Um, I failed the seventh grade. I don't know. I failed it. Like, and it wasn't because they're like, let's give him a, an extra year to, you know, get better athletically. Um, I had a hard time reading. And, and so I failed English four quarters in a row and got put back in the seventh grade. And I learned, you know, I, luckily I have great parents um, who, who, who really helped me understand that it's okay. Like you don't quit school. You just go to the seventh grade again and to have faith that it would work out. And it did, you know, what it really did do though, is I went to foot, college on a football scholarship. And to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I was able to do that is I had an extra year development more than anybody else did. You know, so it, it, you, it's, it's not hope. It's, 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 you know, that it's going to work. That's the difference in my, in my mind. I love that. How do you help uh, others work through fear? Cause that's what holds so much of us back. And it could be fear that we don't even know that we have. Well, I totally agree with you. Most of the time we don't, we have zero clue. Well, I always look at it like this, Jenny. People, us, me, me included, we want to look good and be right more than anything else. Like, how many of you put on your worst outfit today? It's like, I'm like, oh my God, this is so tight. Can't wait to wear it. You know, and the answer is none of us. We always want to look good and be right. 
And what I've learned, because that's the, the, the real fear is that, like, we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to fail. We don't want to look like we don't know what we're doing. And I, I want you to know, though, that that's exactly what we're doing. We, we, no, nobody knows. We look at Gary Keller now and we say, okay, well, he, he's got it all figured out, but he's in chapter 37 in his book. Go back and look at chapter one and tell me if you have the same outlook. <laughs> So when it talk about fear, I, I always have to reverse it in my mind. So what I mean by reversing the fear is what if I don't, you know, like, what if I don't, what is it going to be like to finish this and ask myself the question, you know, what did I not go after because I feared it? And does that scare me more than the action I'm about to take? And most of the time when I get logical with myself, I can, we can work through the fear because that, that, that in my mind is, is, you know, we talk about the uh, living, uh, leaving a legacy. We should be living that legacy. That's how we get to leave it. So every time there's a challenge and I have fear on a daily basis. I mean, let's just be real, <laughs> you know, like we do scary things in our mind. They're not really scary, but in our minds they are. So like, like you got to kind of re reverse that fear. And then sometimes I even do this. I go, how, what would I do right now if my kids were watching me? you know, like, because you want the best for them, you know, you encourage them. So encourage yourself. That That's what I did. I don't know if that works. I like, I like how you, um, what I thought of in that time was that we need to be living our best lives now. How do we know what our best life is? I think this well, is what a lot of bold does for us is helps us dream so much bigger. Well, it does. And, and that's the thing, like, it, we got to go back. I say this all the time. Think like an eight-year-old. Go back and, you know, I, I, I see kids and my kids, and even when I was a kid, when they put on a Spider-Man outfit, they're not putting on a costume so they can look like Spider-Man. In their mind, they're Spider-Man for the moment. And if you go ask an eight-year-old what they want out of life, I, I can guarantee you none of them answer average. None of them. None of them. And, and I just, I, I go back to that often when I have limited beliefs about what's possible and just say, you know, what would an eight-year-old do now? What would they think? My, my daughter one time drew a house that she wanted. And my, my daughter loves candy. She, I'm not going to lie to you, she does. And in this house, she, I mean, she drew it and there was one big giant room in the middle, a bunch of rooms on the side. And the only room that was in color was the candy room, which was the biggest room there. She'd just gotten back from New York and she'd gone to the Dillon's candy store. Oh yeah. And and, 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 and I, st I started asking myself, when do we stop asking for candy rooms? When do we stop asking for that? Well, that's what life should be about, right? Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anybody else like deep in thought here about how we need to go find a candy room or at least have, you know, part of uh, get removing that fear to know that, um, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen if I say yes to this? Exactly. That's a great one. I love that question. Yeah. What's the worst thing that could happen? And then whenever you chunk it down, you go, oh, well, that's not that bad. Yeah. True. So that finishes off here. What are your, your final parting words for all the amazing people that are going to watch this or here with us now? Uh, we all love you, by the way, and I just can't wait to give you a real hug in real life soon enough. And um, what are some parting words for us? Um, parting words, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I, I, the, the simplest words I, I always use, and I finish off my emails with this, is be bold and have fun. Um, number one, bold is a choice. I mean, it is. It, it, it's a choice. And once we understand that, then we can choose it every day. Doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect, but you can choose it. And that's a big deal. And the second thing is have fun. I mean, at every moment in every situation, people get on roller coasters for fun. So look at your life and have fun with it. Even at the tough times, you know, I, love, I always say go fail and then like jump up with jazz hands. Because if you're having fun, you will. You understand that it's just part of your journey. It's not the destination. So that's what I would leave. Well, I love it. I appreciate you so much. And I know everyone else does as well. Uh, Scott, if people want to 
learn more about you? How do they find you? Where can they go? What can they do? You can go to MySpace. And no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you go to my AOL account and, and ping me. No, listen, um, <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. I think uh, Scott Toombs, um, you can, my, you can te- email me, uh, stoombs at kw.com. Um, you, can, you can call me. Um, my number's in the white pages. It, it, it just, I'm always available. I love real estate. I love the real estate agent. Um, and I'm passionate about this company. So I, if I'm always here too, I love to talk. And I, I promise you, I will call you back if I don't answer. Yeah, you sure will. Well, have a great weekend and we appreciate you so much. Bye guys. Have a good Bye guys. Week. Thanks, Jenny. Thank good to see you, you guys. Bye. Bye.